everybody, welcome back to another episode of the show. There's been an update, uh, two new, I guess, two new papers have been pu published in, in um, I think, the journal Nature. Yeah, Nature. And we're revisiting Denisova Cave here. And last time I did an episode on this, I was talking about the Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid that was found uh, in the cave, which dates to around roughly 100,000 years ago or so. And these two new papers, they come up with more dates that kind of fill these chronological gaps and and paint a clearer picture of what what exactly was going on back then they date they found and dated animal and plant remains charcoal fragments and of course neanderthal and denisovan fossils and um it seems like the denisovans got there first before the neanderthals did but either way you slice it they both were co occupying the same site at the same time uh they were overlapping so to speak uh, no modern human remains have been found, but they do think that they, the the two species, had come into contact with uh, uh, modern humans because not too far away they found modern human uh, fossils, which dated uh, a little bit uh, later. They did a bunch of different dating. They did uh, radiocarbon dating. They did uranium dating, and then they did uh, thermoluminescent dating. And the stone artifacts that they found were uh, dating to middle to upper Paleolithic. Again, that's pretty pretty old. But it's it, it gets pretty it, it gets pretty older than that. The chronological timeline that they've come up with. Again, this is all working uh, dates. There's still a whole another section of the cave that they haven't even excavated or looked at yet. All this information comes from uh, two uh, two different parts of the cave that have been uh, pretty thoroughly uh, looked into. They believe the timeline of the cave starts well over 300,000 years ago and was in, well in use up until 20,000 years ago, which is really interesting because Neanderthals were thought to have uh, died off about 40,000 years ago. So that's a really interesting wrinkle in this uh, mystery here. So uh, this quote comes from uh, the article, I think it comes, where is it? MSN.com. So um, I think by way of CNN or something like that. But uh, anyway, quote, they believe that Denisovans lived in the cave between 287,000 and 55,000 years ago and overlapped with the Neanderthal occupation of the cave between 193,000 and 97,000 years ago. That is really interesting because the Neanderthals, if, if this is true, then the Neanderthals were there later and left earlier than the Denisovans who came the earliest and left the latest. That's really, really interesting why would the Neanderthals come and go so quickly? Maybe there's a war, or maybe they just haven't found the evidence. And again, there's another section of the cave that they haven't even looked at yet. So uh, maybe the dates may might go even further back, or maybe they both both species occupied the arrived at the same time, and they just haven't found the necessary evidence yet. If you guys don't know where Denisova Cave is, um, here's a pretty uh, decent map. So it's between Kazakhstan and Mongolia inside of Russia. This is where uh, the Denisovans were living at that time period. And I did an episode on the Tibetan Plateau and the Denisovans uh, artifacts that they found there, the tools. And it's very interesting that, because I, I mentioned in that last video, that the Denisovans migrated from Siberia for whatever reason. They crossed the Tibetan Plateau in order to get to what was heavily speculated, what's now Polynesia and New, Gu uh, New Guinea and Australia, which explains why the, those people there in New Guinea and, and Austronesia, I suppose, have a contingent of Denisovan DNA in their, uh, re in, their, in their genes, in their genetic record. Again, the mystery is out. Uh, why would they uh, cross the Tibetan Plateau, which is unforgiving in, in its altitude and its the bitter cold there? And they were up there long enough to have left tools there. So it's all a huge mystery. Maybe there was a huge climate shift. Maybe at that point it was warmer than we thought. Uh, but either way, um, it, it, again, th this kind of elucidates what was going on. These dating techniques that I mentioned earlier were applied to bone, tooth, and charcoal fragments and cave sediments. And Tom Higgum, he's the co-author of the study from the University of Ox Oxford. He's the guy who was in charge of the radiocarbon accelerator unit. 
He says it's the first time we were able to confidently assign an age to all archaeological sequence of the cave and its contents. So they're pretty set on this. Now, if you want to play devil's advocate here, you could not accept any of this evidence and any of this dating because a lot of people don't believe it's reliable. I don't know either way. I guess those people could be right. But I'm just trying to report what the scientific community has spent money on and researched on their own time and these are this is what's being reported so again maybe it could be fake but i don't know i think a lot of this is compelling and it it it's hard to deny the fact that those people in austronesia have this blood in them and this theory that the denisovans crossed the tibetan plateau into austronesia is again like i said very compelling and it, and with in light of all of this it makes a lot of sense Separately, dating of the Denisovan fossils show that the oldest fossil was there 195,000 years ago. The young, youngest Denisovan fossil was between 76,000 and 52,000 years ago. And pendants and needles of bone were dated between 49,000 to 43,000 years ago. Whether the, these pendants and needles were, were made by the Denisovans, uh, it is entirely possible. And if it is true that they did, the Denisovans did make those that, those, that type of jewelry, then that that means they were around semi recently i mean 43,000 years ago when you look at the scope of how old the earth is is really <laughs> just a drop in the bucket right so maybe there's even well i'm not going to go that far but m maybe they are living among us and we just can't see them <laughs> stone tools allow for the earliest suggestion that the ancient humans occupied the cave 300,000 years ago so that's why the cave is dated to as early as 300,000 years ago is because um, the bone and the actual Denisovan and Neanderthal fossils, they don't date to that old. But obviously the tools do. So someone back then, 300,000 years ago, must have made the tools, right? I mean, they didn't just fall from the sky. So this cave must have been well known in their community for it to have been in use probably either on and on, even if it is on and off for 300,000 years that's still significant um, and of course it'd be way more uh, mind-blowing if it was just 300,000 years straight through up until 20,000 years ago so the fossils show it's more likely that Denisovans began their occupation of the cave 200,000 years ago with Neanderthals arriving soon after so again this is all before exploring the entire cave so they're kind of jumping to conclusions here but this is again up until this point all the evidence up until this point uh the daughter of the neanderthal and the denny sylvan reveals that the two met and interbred a hundred thousand years ago that's what i did the last video on when the climate was warm and stable so when they were occupying that site up until twenty thousand or maybe forty thousand years ago it was very habitable it, it, it wasn't too cold and i suspect that whether it was the younger dryest or some sort of climate shift forced those people to either stay there and, and starve and die or cross over the plateau or other avenues to get out of the region and seek uh, a more temperate climate which is probably most likely what happened the cave sheltered neanderthals and denisovans through varying climates where the when the area supported warm humid forests before much colder tundra periods based on the plant remains that were uncovered so they found these uh, plant remains and they found that these plants that could only survive in temperate weather were there in abundance so um and then go figure they, they mysteriously d the fossils no longer show up in the record once like all at once so that is probably indicative of a climate shift okay i'm just trying to explain this might seem obvious to a lot of people i'm just trying to explain it to people who don't know how to interpret the evidence um, this reliable timeline enables us to link the archaeological, environmental, fossil, and DNA information together across space and time to look for patterns of change in hominin presence, behavior, and their interactions with prevailing climate. So this is why they're so certain of their date, because they have different lines of evidence that are now being threaded together. The DNA, I think, is probably one of the most valuable uh, because it, it, it's proof that modern humans interacted with Denisovans and Neanderthals at some point or maybe multiple points of the entire species existence. Um, so I think that's the most compelling, but then all of this uh, plant and fossil evidence is really interesting as well. And then the archeological, of course, is uh, pretty self-explanatory, the, uh, the tools and all that. But again, if you're an naysayer or a skeptic, you're probably gonna think, oh yeah, well, 
radiocarbon dating is unreliable past 50,000 years, which is why they uh, used other types of dating as well. But, you know, uh, people like to poo-poo evidence or poo-poo uh, ty types of uh, techniques, which um, is, is warranted for, um, for a lot of cases. But I don't know. I think this is what we have for now, and this is what makes a lot of sense. And again, it's subject to change. Yeah, the dating techniques, radiocarbon, uranium series dating, uh, stimulated luminescence dating. Sorry, I think I said thermal luminescence. Uh, I meant stimulated luminescence, um, which is determining uh, when a quartz was exposed to light with genetic ages of the fossils determined by mitochondrial DNA extracted from them. So that's a pretty uh, big, that's a big pile of, of uh, evidence right there. Mitochondrial DNA evidence is pretty reliable. There's like a bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, he says, although there might still be some uncertainty about the detailed ages of the remains, given the nature and complexity of the deposits and the dating methods used, the general picture is now clear. Uh, the general picture. So um, now they have something to work with, whereas before there was no candle in the dark, so to speak. They're, they were just sort of stabbing in darkness just to see what was going on. And now that they've built, they sort of built this case then they could kind of make the argument that there really were people, some hominins, and maybe even humans. We don't know yet because, again, they haven't, dis they haven't discovered anything in the unexplored parts of the cave. So that's yet, yet to be uh, researched. So the researchers are pretty unanimous that they believe that they lived long enough to encounter modern humans who were migrating through Asia. Uh, the nearest modern human fossils were found 621 miles from the cave. So modern humans, again, probably the earliest one was, um, I think, in North Africa about 315,000 years ago. So this checks out that, that we all could have mingled at some point. And we did because there are people <laughs> alive right now. I don't know how many I'm going to say that, but there are people alive right now with Denisovan uh, DNA. And there's some mystery DNA that some people have as well. So it might be yet another undiscovered uh, humanoid species that has yet to be discovered. Um, so the Denisovan ancestry and living Australian Aboriginal and New Guinean people could therefore be the result of direct interbreeding between their ancestors and Denisovans. So yeah, here's uh, previous excavations have almost entirely been carried out in the main and east chambers of the cave, and they'll continue their study in the third chamber, which is the southern chamber. Um, they're also working on other sites in the Altai region to provide a regional scale timeline for the hominin occupation. So they're expanding outward into the area just to see what else is going on in this area so that's going to be really interesting to have a region-wide history of uh, us and our ancestors and our cousins i guess it seemed like siberia was really popping back then it must have been pretty warm and it must have had fresh water and all this all the things necessary to have uh, some sort of either civilization or a strong enough population that could live on its own and again they're using stone tools so it's pretty remarkable how this is all uh, panning out another thing is about this Denisova cave that was brought to my attention was if you're a conspiracy person or if you read up on a lot of uh, Gnostic or um, uh, ancient uh, sources and some dubious some not but there are people out there who believe that there are beings either goblins or myth mythical beings or even he uh, uh, an offshoot of humans that live underground, what's better known as a hollow earth theory, um, this might be some sort of um, origin point where those rumors uh, come from. And perhaps the, the, the a cave like Denisova Cave, which is pretty cavernous and big and if you go to Afghanistan and parts of the Middle East and even Israel, there are all kinds of networks of underground caves that are that stretch miles and miles wide. What's not to say that that's also happening at Denisova Cave in, in the Altai region? So if that's the case, then if you're um, if you're a human that somehow experienced those caves, then word of mouth would kind of travel fast, right? Maybe uh, next thing you know, you play a game of telephone about these caves and that there are people living there and then that spreads to one person and one community to another and another community and next thing you know you have goblins living in the hollow earth and i don't know i obviously i don't know this is all speculation but it that it would make sense that that's where 
at least some of the legend comes from. Um, let's take a couple of pi uh, look pictures and then I'll get out of here. So this is the entrance to the cave or one of the entrances. And it looks pretty um, like your standard cave. I, I, I feel like it could be overlooked pretty easily if you didn't have a trained eye and if there were uh, overgrowth in front of the entrance. Um, I think this is one of the bone pieces that they were uh, uh, carbon dating. And this is just a Google Earth image of Denny Silva Cave. So yeah, anyway, I just thought I, I would update you guys on, on this. And remember, it, it, it's ongoing. So I'm pretty sure in a few mo more months, especially once they um, continue studying the Southern Chamber, more and more evidence and more and more uh, facts and discoveries will come out. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys later.